Hi everyone, welcome to Jamovi uh, session five, I think we're up to now. Um, this week we're going to be focusing on what's called regression or regression analysis. And this is all about prediction. So predicting uh, how things might change based on past data. Um, so essentially, if A goes up, how much does B go up or down? Okay, so we have previous look, previously looked at correlation, which is if A goes up, does B go up or down? But regression is all about if A goes up, how much does B go up or down? Not just if A and B are related, but how much does something change based on something else? Okay, so um, just as a bit of a review before we get into this, remember what is a correlation, right? A correlation is all about expressing a relationship between two variables, a correlation, right? So a correlation is positive when two values increase with each other, and a correlation is negative when one value decreases as the other value increases. So we, um, we thought about that example of the correlation between temperature and ice cream sales. Right? Um, if the temperature increases, we would expect that ice cream sales increase. We would expect a positive correlation with, between uh, temperature and ice cream sales. Um, so an increase in temperature, we would expect to see a positive increase in the number of ice cream sales. So that's a correlation, right? We've looked at that before. A correlation is just expressing whether there is or is not a correlation, a, a, a relationship uh, between two variables. Now, prediction is different from correlation. With prediction, we're interested in how much one variable increases or decreases when another variable increases or decreases. Um, so in uh, prediction, when we're wanting to predict what might happen, we have independent variables, right? This is the variable that causes change in another variable. And we have a dependent variable, the variable that changes because of change in another variable. Right. In correlation, we don't necessarily really talk about independent or dependent variables um, as much as we do in, um, in prediction. Right. So regression analysis is what we use when we want to talk about the prediction of something or, or where we want to predict the outcome of something based on another variable. So for example, we'll come back to our favorite example of temperature and ice cream sales. So imagine for a moment that you own an ice cream truck. Um, you own an ice cream truck, maybe it's um, sitting at uh, Reda Outlet Mall or something, um, and you see on the news that there's a heat wave forecast for the next week, right? And you think, oh, this is great. The temperatures are going to be off the charts. It's going to be super hot. And But you want to know how many more ice creams you can sell for, extra, for each extra one degree Celsius that the temperature rises. All right, so you have, you have a a prediction, you, well, you have an expectation that because the temperature is going to rise next week, that you will get a real boost in sales. But 
you don't want to just go based on feeling, right? You want to use some numbers, some data to make some predictions, right? And depending on what your prediction says, you might be able to invest in a brand new expensive ice cream making machine. Right? So you've wanted to buy this expensive ice cream making machine for a long time and you've been selling ice creams for the last five years and you think oh, if if only the temperature increases maybe this much then maybe I can sell this much more that this many more ice creams and I can make this much more money and I'll be able to buy this uh, ice cream making machine. But you don't want to just guess, right? You want to have a good idea because maybe you need to put in the order for this ice cream making machine quite early before you've even made the money. Right? So you want to use pr uh, past data to, to make some kind of prediction. So your independent variable is temperature, right? And you have maybe over the last few years, you've been collecting data saying, okay, today, uh, um, five years ago on this day, uh, the, the, um, the maximum temperature was say 20 degrees. The next day was 21 degrees. The next day was 17 degrees, right? So you've Let's imagine that you have the last five years of daily maximum temperature data. And dependent variable, number of ice creams sold. Let's say you have the last five years of data of the, of the number of ice creams you sold per day. Um, you want to use this data, this previous data, to make some kind of statistical analysis to give yourself some statistical evidence to make your decision as to whether you're going to be able to, to buy that new um, ice cream making machine or not. All right, so you own an ice cream, uh, ice cream truck. You see on the news that there's a heat wave forecast for the next week. You want to know how many more ice creams can you sell for, extra, for every extra one degree Celsius that the temperature rises. Now, depending on what your prediction says, you might be able to invest in a brand new expensive ice cream making machine. Okay, so the, the tool that we use for um, doing this kind of uh, analysis is regression analysis. Or this is a statistical tool that we use. Um, and regression can be expressed in a formula. Um, and the formula goes like this. So the number of ice creams that could be sold, right, that could be sold equals how many ice creams are sold normally per day at normal temperature plus how many extra, um, sorry, extra ice creams you could sell for every one degree increase in temperature. Just replace that with ice creams. So the number of ice cream sales, say you find out that average, on average you sell about 250 ice creams per day. If you do regression analysis, you might find out that for every one degree increase in temperature, you might be able to sell an extra 10 ice creams. Right? So this is based on your previous data that you've collected. Right? You might find that for every one degree increase in temperature, you might be able to sell an extra 10 ice creams. So maybe the heat wave that is predicted for next week uh, is predicted to be at least 15 degrees hotter than the average temperature for that time of year, for each day, right, for a week. So you might be able to say, okay, well, based on my analysis of my previous data, I can expect that it's going to be an increase of 15 degrees. And here my data is telling me that if the um, temperature increases by one degree, I can sell 10 extra ice creams. That means an extra, what, 150 ice creams I might be able to sell. 
And so um, regression gives us a tool for being able to predict how much a particular variable might increase based on the increase of a different variable. Um, but then, of course, the question is, is this a significant increase? Right? We, we don't want to just say, oh, well, look, my data say it tells me that I should be able to expect an, inc an increase. We want to make sure that this is a significant increase or not. So uh, before we go on, um, we need to do a little bit of a review on statistical symbols, right? We've, we've seen a lot of st statistical symbols uh, over these last couple of weeks. Um, so some statistical symbols that we've seen so far, um, we've seen the T value symbol, right? Remember when we're wanting to compare averages across groups, um, when we report t-test results, we report the t-value, the p-value, which is the, um, uh, the significance value. Then we have the d-value. Remember the d-value, which, um, uh, which is the effect size for um, a t-test, essentially how big a difference is between two groups. Remember, remember the R value. So this is for correlation analyses, right? The um, correlation coefficient is represented by R. Um, so, we, so when we report correlation uh, analysis results, we report the R value and the P value. Once again, the P value is statistical significance. And then last week we looked at the chi-square value, right? Chi-square test to compare averages. So when we report the chi-square results, we report the chi-square value and the p-value. Now, regression analysis has its own symbols as well. It ha um, often you'll see the beta, um, which is the raw increase in the, independent, uh, in the dependent variable. So in the example that we just saw, the raw increase would be that 10 ice creams per one degree increase in temperature. Um, and then also we have the beta value. Um, they sound very similar, but they're represented either as a capital B for the raw increase and um, a small b for the standardized increase in the dependent variable. Now the beta here, the small b beta, um, is kind of like the R value for um, the correlation coefficient. Um, so these two are kind of related, um, but, but for, for regression. Um, and most of the time for regression analysis, we will be reporting the standardized um, regression um, coefficient. So that's a lot of information, but let's just go through this um, uh, using an example so you can get a bit of a, a feel for this. So Facebook self-promotion and society as an example. Um, let's say that we have two variables, Facebook self-promotion and relational mobility. All right, so Facebook self-promotion, we've already seen that before the last couple of weeks how much someone shows off on Facebook. And how do we measure this? We use the Facebook self-promotion scale. This is a six point scale, um, 10 items. We've got 12 items here, but it's actually 10 items. Um, and example items, if I got an award, I'd post about this on Facebook. If I bought something expensive, I'd post about this on Facebook, etc., etc. So these are some example items from this Facebook self-promotion scale. And people respond on a um, six point scale here of one completely disagree to six completely agree. Now relational mobility. This um, is a variable that refers to how much competition there is in a society for friends and relationships. Now 
if you live in a society like the US, which is very high in relational mobility, um, there's lots of options for making new relationships. So not only are people always looking for potential new friends, but they're also trying really hard to keep their current friends. Right, so one might expect that there might be a relationship between the amount of competition for getting new friends and keeping new friends and Facebook self-promotion. So Facebook self-promotion is kind of like advertising yourself to potential uh, friends, right? Or advertising yourself to your current friends to make sure that they don't go off and find other friends. So the dependent variable is Facebook self-promotion and the independent variable is relational mobility. Right? So the amount of options there are for interpersonal relationships, that might affect how much people advertise themselves or show off on Facebook. So we could say that self-promotion on Facebook, you know, how much somebody, an, an individual, um, uh, shows off on Facebook, this might, we might be able to express this as the average self-promotion when there's no relational mobility, plus how much self-promotion happens when relational mobility increases by one point on the relational mobility scale. So re you can measure relational mobility by asking people in a survey um, the uh, relational mobility scale. So there's 12 items on the relational mobility scale. Uh, people respond to statements such as, there are many chances to meet new people in my society. If I'm in a relationship that I don't like, I can leave it for a better one, etc. So there's um, items kind of like this in the uh, relational mobility scale and people respond on a six point scale of one completely disagree to six completely agree. Um, so any particular person, if we know um, how relationally mobile their society is, then we might be able to predict how much self-promotion they do. So let's make a bit of a, a prediction, right? Um, I'd like you to draw on a piece of paper this graph here, the relationship between relational mobility and Facebook self-promotion, right? So the independent variable on the x-axis or the horizontal axis is relational mobility. And on the y-axis here um, is Facebook self-promotion, right? So Facebook self-promotion here. So the hypothesis, um, I'd like you to make a prediction. Um, relational mobility either positively or negatively predicts Facebook self-promotion. Remember, the theory is that um, uh, the theory is that if there's more relational mobility, then people have to work harder to keep their current relationships. And they, they are always kind of on the outlook for um, better or more interesting relationships. So in that case, um, if relational mobility increases, do you think we would see an increase in um, Facebook self-promotion or a decrease in Facebook self-promotion? Okay, so pause the video here and have a little bit of a think and draw this graph and make a prediction. Okay, so hopefully you have made a prediction um, and we are going to try testing that prediction. So I'd like you to open up um, this, uh, um, this data file here. Um, I think I might have to jump out of my uh, presentation here just to grab that URL. Um, so uh, open up that URL, you'll be able to 
download a new data set that has relational mobility data in it. So download uh, that data set there and then open that up in Jamovi. And you'll see that our, um, our data set is very similar to what we have seen so far. We have uh, the variables um, in columns here. Remember that the horizontal uh, rows here are people that have responded to our survey. Now, uh, if we go along here, we've got friend, ends, the number of Facebook friends that people have reported. Um, we have uh, Facebook use time, how long people use Facebook every day, the um, purpose for what people use Facebook for, right? We used that last, uh, last week for chi-square analyses. We've got our S-prom variables, so self-promotion variables. S-prom-D, this self-promotion demerit variables here. So from S-prom-D1 to 5. Um, S-prom-M, self-promotion merit variables. We have the um, uh, gender, self-reported gender, age, country, economic level. Um, education level. Here we have the self-promotion average variable, self-promotion merits average here, self-prom D, self-promotion demerits average. Um, the self, uh, the Facebook purpose, uh, purpose of using Facebook variable um, that's been kind of, uh, compacted into two uh, levels here. And what's new for this week is the relational mobility variables. So we've got, um, or the relational mobility items, sorry. Uh, relational mobility 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there's 12 items in the relational mobility scale. So first, we're going to have to um, get an overall relational mobility score for each person who took the survey, right? So everybody in the survey, they evaluated their surrounding society on how relationally mobile the society is. So we need to make an average of that for each person. So we right click or control click, um, double tap for um, uh, Mac as well. Right click in here, add variable and we're going to append a computed variable. So append a computed variable. So that gives us, uh, gives us a new variable at the end of our data set here. Um, if we double click on this, then that will give us our interface here to create our, um, our overall average um, relational mobility score for each person. So we might want to put here um, uh, a name for this. I'm gonna just keep it short. So our mob relational mobility underscore av or average. So our mob underscore av. Um, and then in our formula here, remember when we want to make an average of um, a number of items, then we just add up those items and um, and then divide them by the number of items. So my R mob one plus R mob two um, plus R mob three, divided by 12, right? So R mob 1 plus R mob 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, divided by 12. Looks good so far. Press enter. Oops, something is not going right here. Column R mob 4 does not exist in the data set. If we have a look here, in our R mob variables here we have some r's here r mob 4 r r mob 4 5 r r mob 7 r 9 r 11 r and 12 r um we haven't got enough time to go into this in detail but these are reversed 
items. Um, in any case, we need to add R to some of these. So I'm of 4R, 5R, 7R, 9R, 11R, 12R. So if we do that, then um, Jamovi says, good, fine, this works. So now we have our relational mobility average score. So now we can use this as our independent variable and we can use the self-promotion average, uh, S-prom-av, as our dependent variable. So how do we do regression analysis in Jamovi? We click on regression up here in the analyses tab and click on linear regression. So regression, linear reg regression, and our dependent variable. What is our dependent variable? Self-promotion average, right? We want to see how relational mobility impacts self-promotion. So we have our S-prom-av, self-promotion average score here, and our independent variable, um, which is uh, referred to in Jamovi as covariates, as um, R mob av. Right? And immediately um, Jamovi gives us some uh, analyses here, but we want to add one more thing, which is in the model coefficients section here, we want to add standardized estimate. Standardized estimate. So we've added S prom av to dependent variable, R mob av to covariates, and we've clicked on standardized estimate, standardized estimate here. So now we can have take a look at our results here. Um, we have a um, an R value here, which is a an effect size. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment, and then we have our main results here. So I'm going to jump back to uh, <coughs> PowerPoint here um, and go through these uh, results that we have. Um, so first of all, uh, we have in the mo model coefficients section here, we have the raw unstandardized regression coefficient value. So this is the raw value. Um, it's not, uh, it's it, it sometimes used, sometimes not. Um, uh, but then we have the p-value, which is the significance value, and then we have um, the standardized regression coefficient value. So this is the value that we um, will use more often um, in, uh, in, um, in our results. And here, actually, I've, I've um, made a bit of a mistake here. I've, I've indicated this with a large b, but standardized... Um, uh, regression coefficient values are represented as a small b. Um, so we have, uh, in terms of what we actually report, um, what's most important is the standardized regression coefficient value and the significance value, of course, and the effect size. This is very important. Um, because in terms of effect sizes, um, when we do regression analyses, we can make some conclusions about how large the effect is. So for regression effect sizes, we use R squared. Um, R squared is uh, R squared if it's 0 0.10 is a small effect. R squared if it's 0 0.30 or thereabouts, it's a medium effect. Uh, if it's 0.5, this is considered to be a large effect. So how do we put all of this together? Um, in terms of reporting regression analyses, just like the analyses that we've seen previously, first we give the, the, the hard statistical results and then we um, report that or, or we um, interpret that into normal everyday language. So in this case, a regression analysis showed that relational mobility positively and significantly predicted Facebook self-promotion. Right, so we have the beta value here of 0.13, right? 
standardized estimate here, 0.13, and the p-value, 0.021. Right, so this p-value is less than 0 0.05, so therefore it is a significant relationship. However, this is a very small relationship, right? So it's a very small effect. Um, so remember that if r squared equals 0 0.10, it's a small effect. But this result here is 0 0.018, right? 0 0.1 is a small effect. This is 0 0.01. So this is a very small effect um, almost probably not worth mentioning now this means that hi the higher relational mobility is in a society people will self-promote slightly more and this result supports hypothesis one so this assumes that you have predicted that if relational mobility increases facebook self-promotion will also increase Right, so if your hypothesis was that there would be a, um, uh, you know, a positive relationship, you know, re increase in relational mobility equals increase in uh, Facebook self-promotion, then this supports hypothesis one. Now, on your own, I would like you to uh, test, um, test a hypothesis or, or, or I'd like you to figure out does relational mobility predict how much people focus on the demerits of self-promoting on Facebook? All right. So does relational mobility predict how much people focus on the demerits of self-promoting on Facebook? So this analysis here was focusing on the behavior of self-promoting on Facebook but your homework is focusing on uh, what people think about or what people focus on in terms of uh, self-promotion on Facebook. Do they focus on the positive things that might happen when showing off on Facebook or do they focus on the potential negative things that might happen? In this case, I'm asking you to um, see if, face, if, if relational mobility if that predicts whether people will focus on the negative aspects of uh, self-promoting on Facebook. So here is a slide um, that uh, I'd like you to kind of give the result, um, the answers to. So first of all, uh, does relational mobility predict a focus on demerits of self-promotion on Facebook? Either yes or no. So give either yes or no here. What is the standardized regression coefficient? So you, you'll get a standardized regression coefficient for that relationship. What is the p-value? Right? Is it a significant um, uh, relationship or not? And then I'd like you to write out your findings um, in this kind of way here. Okay, so that's your, uh, um, that's your homework. Um, and I look forward to uh, hearing what you guys discover. Okay, so thank you very much and good luck.